Hey, welcome to uh, the Chapter 8, Part 3 Desk Lecture. And this is all about notes receivables. So we're basically done with accounts receivables, and now we're going to talk about notes receivables. What is a notes receivable? Well, it's when we're going to get paid, only it's going to take a little bit longer. So an accounts receivable is directly related to a sale. A note receivable does not necessarily have to be connected to a sale, though it can be historically connected to a sale. Typically, if it is, it was an accounts receivable, and then it became a note receivable. Rece notes receivable are charged interest. This is the first time we talked about interest in this class. And so make sure you're comfortable and familiar with the interest formula, principal times rate times time. And keep in mind for this formula by time, we're talking about parts of a year. So if it's one year, then it's principal times rate. If it's less than a year, then it's principal times rate times something over 12. So we're always gonna be taking everything by months. We're not going to be doing any kind of real daily calculations in this class. We're going to keep it pretty simple and that everything's divided by 12 and that kind of thing. And so you're going to see crazy interest rates like 12% interest just because it's easier to do a monthly calculation with 12% interest. The uh, example I've given you here is a $100,000 note issued on December 1st at 12% interest. The note is due for payment to us on March 31st. So we're going to have this note We've, we've, we've lent the money, and so we're owed the money, and we're gonna get paid back on March 31st. And so literally, what I, want, what I wanna see from students, and what I'm doing right now, even though you can't see me, is I'm holding my fingers up in the air. I want you to be using your fingers, December, January, February, March, that's four months. Don't assume you know how to count months. We all know the, the months and how many there are, but I have seen students in these spots who obviously know that it's four months, go five and move on and miss a question because on a multiple choice exam, we have to have something to call it. And so some of these wrong answers are gonna be five months instead of four months. So don't make that mistake. All right, so when we issue a note, this is what our entry looks like. Debit to note receivable, credit cash. And remember a note receivable is an asset account. And now we're gonna do what's called an interest accrual. We talked about interest in unit one, though we didn't get into the calculation of interest. And so you did interest expense accruals in unit one, where it was a debit to interest expense and a credit to interest payable. And this is kind of the same thing, only flipped. And so instead of interest expense, this is our note. We're getting the interest. And so this is actually interest revenue and interest receivable. And the reason why it's 1,000 is because it's only one month. And so if you take 100,000 times 12% times one over 12, which again, that's our interest formula, principal times rate times time. In this case, the principal is 10,000. Sorry, principal is 100,000. The rate is 12% times 0.12 times one over 12 because it's been one month. It's December 31st, so it's only been one month and that's one out of 12. That gives us the number of 1,000. And so we're creating a receivable account. This is an asset account that is, whose job it is is to hold on to our interest. And you'll see where that kind of goes. And then there's a payment of interest. And remember, this is payment to us, not from us, to us, on March 31st when the note matures. The interest we're going to get paid is $4,000. We're going to remove our interest receivable for $1,000, and we're going to record revenues for the difference. And essentially, this is four months of interest here. One month of it we recorded last year. The rest of it we're recording this year. And again, the, the calculation for the $3,000 could be $100,000 principal times rate, 12%, times three over 12 for three months. That gives us 3,000. And then the principal repayment, which is would happen at the same time, is a debit to cash and a credit to note receivable. Keep in mind as we're doing this, you could theoretically on March 31st have squished these two entries together and debit to cash for 104,000 and then just credited all three accounts. I do think it's a good idea to split these up on an exam you would be okay probably. I'd expect your, your, your instructor would give you credit for both because they're the same entries if you squish the two together or not. But I think it's important to keep our interest payments and principles separated. All right, let's talk about worksheets three and four. Worksheet three is a 100% note receivable worksheet. So that is a really a review of what we just got through talking about in video three. It's got your interest, interest, the uh, interest revenues, interest receivables, all that jazz. Worksheet four, however, is really a review worksheet for the entire chapter. It's got accounts receivable and notes receivable all mixed together on one pretty long worksheet. And so if you're thinking about from a study perspective, 
you might think about holding off on worksheet four or at least making a couple of copies for it, one to do now and one potentially to do when you get closer to exam time because I think it will be helpful to you because it's a pretty good review exercise, all things considered. Good luck. If you have any questions, please contact your instructor. Thank you for your time.